what our goal is, is to come from our authentic soul. That aspect of us that knows that there's something much bigger in life, much bigger than ourselves. Feeling my way through the darkness. Gotta you step into your greatness, and who could do that for you? You can. You can. You can. Lisa's Soul Blazing Workshop was phenomenal. It changed my life forever. It really resonated with me, and it really touched me, and made me realize who I need to become. So I just want to do something with you. I just want to hold your hands for a second okay. and look at you. And what I'm doing is I look someone in the eyes for a minute or so, because this is connecting us, grounding us, getting us real. After our hour-long, brutal session, Bella looked at me with tears streaming down her face and said, you just blazed my soul. Your life will never be fully complete until you travel outside your comfort cocoon. I'd like to challenge you to break something something I like to call your comfort addiction. Where Lisa really helped me was where to find out to put focus in my life. Lisa's insights on the problems I was facing within my own life really touched me. You are great. You have a voice. Go out there and knock them alive. Whatever you want to do, you can do. I am happy Rocky. My father was born in Baghdad, so I think if most of you are familiar with the Middle East, women have no power, they have no voice, and I'm one of five girls. And my mom was a Southern Belle, and she was 17 when she got married. And she always told us, never get married, that'll ruin your life. Never have sex before marriage. Never do this, never do that. My dad, everything my dad said was opposite of what she said. At 22 years old, I ran away from home with a runaway note because I had my husband picked out for me and you know, I had this whole life. I was supposed to marry the kids and all that and I'm like, I can't do this. And a friend of mine said, why don't you come to Europe with me? So I did that. So we went to Europe and we had this three week European vacation and it was amazing. I was told that everyone's dangerous, don't trust any man, and women are all jealous, and everyone's awful except this small Chaldean community that you're supposed to marry, this wonderful second cousin, by the way, and work in a grocery store and bag groceries, because you're not the cashier, because you're a woman, you just bag. You don't get to do any orders or meet with anybody, you just bag and you smile. So, you know, I fled, and when I came back, there was no way I could continue on that road. When you come from your authentic soul, you have no fear. And in every moment in our life, we have a choice to come from love or to come from fear. What is the best way to have a voice is to be a writer. I said, I have all these stories inside me. There's so many things that I want to say. I had written a script and I sold it and the company went bankrupt. It was Orion. And I tried to get the script back and they said, I'm sorry, it'll cost you three times the amount of money that they paid for it. And I'm like, why? There are like too many producers involved and they already sunk money into it. So I thought, aha, I will go to Tokyo and raise money. This is in 1990, 91, where they had so much cash. In college, I studied international finance too because I wanted to make money on my mom's side, make your own money. So I went to Japan and when you're a model, I discovered, Everyone wants to be your best friend. You're so popular, it's crazy. You know, my billboards were up everywhere, and I was in commercials. Whoever meets you, because there's not too many Americans there. Oh, I know, you can have your autograph, can I have this? So you get into every club for free. You get into everything for free. All you do is show your Z card. So I realized, oh, I've got power here. Let me use it. So every time I did a modeling gig or a commercial, everyone said, oh, let's go have lunch, or let's do this. So I made a joke of no one could have lunch with me unless you give me a million dollars. Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, look, I'm the model. Who are you guys? You're like these <laughs> businessmen, you know, come on. So it just became an inner joke. It, that's my narcissism posture, which I'll teach you about later. And they're like going, no, 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 let's just go have a drink with this. I, I never took a drink, 
had lunch with anyone unless they gave me a million dollars. After a couple of months of this, people started laughing. Oh, there's that girl. And I became famous for, there's that girl that won't talk to anyone unless they give her a million dollars. And people in Japan, anytime you go out with them, they buy you a gift. Or they give you some money to, to buy yourself something because it's Japanese culture. And I'd always say, no, I don't accept gifts. I don't accept cash. Like, you won't take it? Nope, a million dollars, I don't take anything. So I started talking to this one businessman, and then he brought me to the board. He bit and gave me my 50000 down payment. And within three months, I had a million dollars in my bank account. I went back home, a million bucks was in my bank account, and I got to direct my first movie. Yeah. And why do I share that story with you? Because that's the narcissist, imposter. So that's when there's these different sides of you, and people say, oh, that's an ugly side, or we have no ugly sides. We're all one. We're beautiful, exactly the way we are. There's no excuses for not doing anything you want in life. We have everything we need inside. We're all unique. You're the sides that don't work for you, that people, especially when you're in a relationship, criticize you on, there's still positive qualities. You, if you turn them into them, you could have everything you have going for you to work for you, or they could work against you. You know, it's your choice. I couldn't stay at home anymore, so I moved to LA. Where else, right? I want to be a star, because I'm damaged and broken, and who loves me? Nobody cares about me. I'm going to get the whole world to love me. I'll show you again. So I come up here to LA, and on the train up here, Guess what? I'm sitting next to an agent. And she says, come, let me represent you. You seem cool. Within a week, I get my SAG card. I do a commercial. And I'm like, oh my god, this is great. And then I got scared, because then I started getting bigger projects sent my way. And people started telling me, you know how lucky you are? This doesn't happen. What if you screw up? Oh, you're supposed to work with this guy? Oh my god, I would be terrified. I'm like, oh, really? OK. And something clicked. Now I'm terrified. And then I couldn't get roles anymore. You know, that was about a year. My whole acting career was like two years. I had this um, casting director who came to my house and said, oh, I don't know why I'm not getting more work. What I really want to do is be a documentarian filmmaker. I'm like, well, what's the problem? So I just let the person talk for a little while. And he's talking, he's saying this and that. But what I realized, he never mentioned a woman. He never mentioned, you know, several things, this, 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 and that. And I said, stop. And he's like, what, this is after about 20 minutes. And here's a guy who went to therapy for 10 years in New York weekly, and now he's in Los Angeles. And I said, stand up, turn around, and face me and tell me you're gay. And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm not gay. I'm like, it's just an exercise. Just do it. So he does it. And he says, I'm gay. And then I said, turn around. I'm your father. Tell me you're gay. And now part of soul blazing is I kind of channel what I think his father would say or his mother. So I start. You know, da, 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 at him. He's like, what are you doing? I said, turn around, said, tell me you're gay. Turn around, tell me you're gay. Turn around, tell me you're gay. And he's talking to me, and I'm answering as his father. And then I'm your mother now. I'm your sister now. And then cut to 20 minutes later, he's crying, saying, I'm gay, I'm gay. How many people in here believe in miracles? Yay. Great. <laughs> you're my peeps. OK, how many people feel like they know their authentic soul? How many people know what an authentic soul is? OK. How many people know what soul blazing is? The secret to really understanding yourself and being happy is hearing the voice of your authentic soul. Because in every moment, you have a choice to set an intention. And whether you do or not, you're going to get a consequence. So when you, first of all, understand your authentic soul's voice, what do you really want? It's choosing. You don't accept. You know, they said no, but when you know you have this something inside, that seed of greatness, or that seed of anything, even, you know, above mediocrity, you know, but you know you could do better, do it. You know, take that risk. And that's when I thought, God, there's something with this. What are these voices in my head? What is this? And I started studying more, and, it, you know, there's all these names for it. But that's like a perfect example of, like, I'll introduce the imposters to you, but like the narcissist and the wounded inner child battling the overthinker, freaking out, and you know, throwing the, his two cents in. And when you really start to understand the dynamic of this model, you'll get it, because it works for anything. Here's imposters defined. A person who pretends to be somebody else, 
often to try to gain financial or social advantage through social engineering. What did I do to get a million dollars? Yeah, that's exactly, social engineering, okay? So who are your imposters? They're your dark shadow, the negative voices yakking away in your head, the devil on your shoulders, sparring with your angel, you know, good guy, bad guy, and unresolved, unhealed memories, your cultural programming, and the voice that defines you when your buttons get pushed. So how many people in here turn into a different human being when their buttons get pushed? Okay, how many of you in here would like to control that? Okay, and not be reactionary and just be in the moment and be you. That is being your authentic soul. Because if you know who you are, no one can push your buttons. Nobody can make you feel any way you don't want to feel. Only you can do that. When I was in Iraq, I went to an orphanage. They gave me a tour. When I landed in this orphanage, that was my third transformational moment. And why? If you go back to the story with my dad, he said, I want to send you to an orphanage. And he grew up in Iraq. So this was an orphanage in Mosul, the small town that I would have been in. And, that, and if he was in Iraq, they do that with their kids. You know, you're bad. You're, you disgrace the family. Shame. So I'm like, this is, would have been my home. So I talked to these children. I really connected to them. And they're saying, why are you here? You're American. You don't like us. You're going to bomb us. You're going to kill us. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to bomb you. I love you guys. And they're like, nobody cares about us, nobody listens to us, nobody will give us a voice. And I said, I'll give you a voice. So I said, talk to me, and I recorded them, videotaped them, and I asked them their stories. You know, tell me about you. You know, is God fair? What is it in the world that you'd like? If you had one wish, what would it be? And I got these answers from these kids that were just so heartbreaking and so just life-changing. So that was my third pivotal, pivotal moment which I ended up turning into a book called Whispers from Children's Hearts. You have a story because you're actually living life. You're not sitting around waiting for life to happen. So I think that's why we're here in this room today to make a huge shift. And you make a greater shift when you're with other people doing it, not in a small little corner of your room by yourself, thinking, God, okay, I've got to change. What am I going to do? I'm going to, not, I'm going to go on a diet tomorrow, and I'm going to exercise for an hour, and I'm going to write five pages of that script, Okay, good, I'm gonna to go to bed. And you wake up first thing, oh, I'm a little stressed about the day. Let me just have coffee. Well, I wasn't gonna have coffee today. Well, one cup won't kill me and I'll just start after that and then the day goes by. Well, what about writing? Well, you got a phone call, a friend says go here and it goes. And that's because you don't know who you are. You don't know your story. Your imposters are taking over. You're not in charge of them. If someone's mean to you or angry, all they're doing is they're sitting in their imposters and they're miserable inside because you can't be mean and angry or, an, you know, asshole to somebody if, they're, if you're feeling good about yourself. It's impossible because they don't go together. When you're filled with love and you are love, you spew love. How many people relate to that? Yeah? Here are the 10 soul blazing commandments that I promise you if you follow these, your life will be transformed. It's stand tall always. Amplify your authentic soul's voice. Pray, seek solitude, and believe in miracles. Take 10 deep breaths every day, especially when your buttons are pushed before you speak. Take action, leap, and cure your comfort addiction, which I didn't even get into today. That's a whole other thing. Look into your own eyes and perform affirmations. Embrace nature, embrace life, and all its varied forms. Give, serve, and appreciate, and make amends, heal wounds, and love, and of course, laugh loudly. And if you do these things, you know, look at that. How can you not be happy if you live this way and with this kind of integrity every day? Feeling my way through the darkness, guided by a beating heart. I can't tell where the journey was.